I'll introduce Mark Strazek, Executive Director of Tieto Minerals. Yeah, look, um, thanks, Kirsty, and obviously thanks to Paydirt for providing this um, fantastic platform to be able to showcase what uh, what we've been up to. Uh, look, I think obviously it's Africa down under, and it's um, unfortunate that uh, a lot normally the companies like to bring uh, their technical team across here uh, to be able to give them an opportunity to talk about you know, their work and, and their discoveries. So that's our uh, geolo geological team. Uh, you know, Tieto, we've, this is a team that's been with Tieto since um, uh, largely uh, 2014. Um, you know, they're uh, three, just under three and a half million ounce um, ore discoverers. Um, it's led by uh, Mr. Yaya in the middle there. Uh, look, an incredibly, and this is the key, you've got very, very highly skilled uh, technical geologists uh, that um, are, are be able to work and achieve uh, you know, great success when you talk to them. And the enthusiasm uh, is incredible. Um, you know, right now we're at just under 3.4 million ounces. Uh, Yai and the team are looking at 4 million, 5 million ounces. Yeah, they're very, very excited about the future. And their work has uh, seen us, as we'll talk about, um, you know, we're aspiring to follow, uh, become West Africa's uh, next gold mine. So obviously some of the disclaimers there. So um, yeah, look, it's, uh, it's been a very, very, um, you know, a quick journey, but it's also been a long journey. These things don't happen overnight. Um, the founder, uh, Kagan, who's traveling back and heading into a, uh, into a hotel. Uh, first moved into Liberia, just a little bit of a history, uh, in 2010 and hopped across the border into um, Cote d'Ivoire in 2012 uh, and was able to peg the ground with our partners in, um, in 2014. Cote d'Ivoire, look, it is a very uh, good uh, investment destination. Uh, Perseus, Endeavour uh, and Barrick uh, active uh, there and uh, yeah, we're looking to become the, the next mine on the block. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the, the characteristics about uh, Cote d'Ivoire, but there you go. You've got um, you know quite a substantial inventory, uh, just on um, 3.4 million ounces, uh, and uh, we're able to take that through into the um, into the DFS. Uh, we've got uh, a PFS there, some good numbers. We've got the DFS coming up, and we hope to be able to substantially improve on that. Uh, but but there, look, as a start, it's um, a very good uh, position, 200,000 ounces in that uh, first year and uh, looking forward to be able to share with you, um, you know, coming up very soon, the results of uh, the DFS. We do have a, uh, a pathway to production. Importantly, we've been able to secure the mining lease. Uh, so that was done last year in uh, December 2020. We've also got environmental approval for what is a, a, a stage one, a fairly large scale uh, project. Uh, we've been able to assemble a team of, uh, of builders um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We have been able to acquire funding and I, I think that's some of the, the key points is um, we do tend to have to tap the capital markets here uh, in Australia and then being able to deploy that uh, into, uh, into West Africa. One of the keys about uh, Tieto is that we um, you know, go after it very, very uh, aggressively. We've been able to assemble our own. We've taken that drilling in-house and we've done that substantially, substantially, substantially due to the large amount of targets that we've got on ground. So in terms of um, where we're sitting, we, we think there's a, an incredible opportunity um, here. Uh, and I think what I do want to talk about in terms of um, the shareholding, we actually have um, shareholders. Uh, we've got uh, two... Um, fairly substantial shareholders in terms of um, uh, Mr. Nakanza and uh, Mr. Bamba. So they are people that have been on the journey with Kagan and they are directly shareholders in the company. Our geological team are also shareholders in the, in the holding company. You know, we all are um, investors in this. We, we take the company, the, the directors and the management team um, uh, are shareholders as well. So there's a, a lot of alignment there. So there's um, Kagan, as I said, the founder, and uh, again, uh, yeah, yeah, with the the technical, the technical team. In terms of the board, we've got a um, 
a good group of uh, individuals that have had experience. Uh, Francis has been picking winners, obviously, with uh, with Richard in the past and uh, with us, and also with uh, predictive. You've seen some of the exploration success. Paul and uh, Paul and I have been uh, MDs, and Hanjing's worked with Jake Klein at. Uh, at uh, Sino, Sino Gold, been able to pick up some research and uh, happy to say that um, a number of the guys have been able to visit site as well. So look, in terms of, of Cote d'Ivoire, um, look, it, it really is uh, very much a, a very early stage in exploration. There's a lot of opportunity here. Um, we were able to get a, a fairly good footprint on the ground in 14. Uh, and obviously, we actually did start work in uh, in 2012. But the key points, obviously, in terms of uh, the geological endowment, you know, it, it's, we've got more broom than anyone else. Uh, but the government support as well is very, very strong. Um, the economy is largely um, driven from uh, cocoa exports, uh, coffee, uh, fishing. Uh, there's also oil exploration. Mining itself only makes about 2% of GDP. So this is very, very early days in, in Cote d'Ivoire. The government has an aim to try and take it to about 4% within the next couple of years. So um, to do that, they provided a very good uh, mining law, uh, good fiscal regime, corporate tax, uh, 25%. Um, the government will also be shareholders in the project with us, and they, they will hold a 10% interest. They've just appointed a director in our holding company called SMG. We, uh, we hold 88% of that, the government holding 10, and our um, two um, shareholders, Ivorian shareholders, will hold um, a, a combined 2%. So directly, uh, this opportunity is uh, stakeholders. We've got uh, government and also um, a number of Ivorian, two Ivorians holding a position in this, um, this new company. Infrastructure, uh, it's very important. Um, Cote d'Ivoire is uh, blessed with a, a very uh, good road network. We've got a double lane highway into Yamasukra, the capital. We're over there in Daloa, which is the third largest agricultural city. It's all sealed highway. The other aspect they have is power. Power is critically important as you're looking at um, mining, mining projects. Uh, we, they have a very expansive hydro network and uh, power is quite cheap. We'll be tapping into that. As part of this development, we'll be um, opening up a new corridor and um, we'll be providing power, very reliable power to a number of communities that are located to the north of the project. Um, as you see, uh, and I did talk about obviously Perseus with two projects and uh, Yare uh, that's really um, starting to hit its straps and accounting for a large amount of that, that company's value. Endeavour have grown into a bit of gorilla in uh, West Africa and it is a large project and obviously Tongon as well up in the north there. So still lots and lots of exploration upside. So there's, um, you know, I guess as it says, a day in the life of Abijar. Um, activity from geology to some uh, early stage development works. We're upgrading the exploration road which we used for the mine access. We're also doing hydro work and there's an air court team. And I think the key is that um, there's four of us sitting here in Perth, but there's over 100 people working directly, and there's probably another 100 or so that are also working on a casual basis. So lots and lots of opportunity. And as always, uh, for the, every position, there's normally a multiplier effect, uh, and it probably ranges between somewhere between 5 to 10, really, when you think about it. A lot of opportunity for con contractors, as you can see there as well, outside of our direct employment. So, um, you know, we do, I think all of the companies here are providing a lot of opportunity for skilled uh, jobs. So one of the differences about Tieto is that um, we like to do things ourselves and we do that to try and save our shareholders uh, dollars and also provide um, control. Uh, we've been able to um, pick up, um, a, a, assemble a team, six um, diamond drill rigs working for us. We've got a, a team of drillers and we've also got a team of um, offsiders and so on that we're training up. They've just gone through a thousand days of um, uh, no, no lost time safety injuries. So it's been a fantastic result. Uh, and you can see there that we've saved, a share, uh, saved our shareholders probably over 17, just under $17 million. So uh, that allows us to uh, really do a lot more for a lot less. So one of the keys is that we've recently announced a, uh, a substantial increase to the, um, or, or, uh, the mineral resources, and that will be going through into the DFS. As you can see, just under 3.4 million ounces, 
a significant uptake in that uh, indicated component, which will be flowing through into the next uplift of um, ore reserves. So just zooming in on the project a little bit, um, yeah, this is a, a province scale opportunity. So there's a large amount of uh, uh, upside here. We've really only just scratched the surface. We've probably drilled about 10% or so, but you've got multiple corridors. Uh, we've identified um, two uh, deposits at this stage. And uh, the, now, the work now is to also look at trying to grow that. And uh, there's a large amount of targets that we'll be talking about. Zooming in on um, AG, this is the, uh, the cornerstone. Uh, you can see there's a little um, list there of some quite exceptional grades and some very good widths. We've converted that into those uh, gold gram meters. So the key here is look for the pink and magenta. Happy to say there's a fair amount of it. Uh, we've been able to convert a lot of uh, mineralization um, from inferred into indicated. We're also currently working on uh, bringing some of that up to measured. But the key, as you've seen from all of our speakers so far, is that all of these systems uh, are large, uh, they're relatively uh, and untapped, so there's a lot and a lot of upside. Uh, we've discovered another uh, project just down the road um, from our PFS. We identified that it could be a satellite opportunity. Uh, this one is a, has a little more oxide, about 40, 50 meter blanket. Uh, so it provides um, something for end of, end of life at this stage. That's how we're looking at it. Yeah, look, look, that's the key. It, it, there is a pipeline. That's the important, the difference about our resources industry that once you get started, you have to be consistently uh, adding to it and you need that big base of targets because not everything's going to come off. Happy to say here we've got an incredible fair way to work with. Uh, in a nutshell, we're going to be busy for many, many years working on this and drilling it out. So really getting down to the nub of it, um, how do you turn that exploration into dollars? Uh, so the key now is uh, to build Abijar. Uh, we've got our target to be the, um, the next uh, gold mine off the block. PFS has identified there um, 3.5 or so million tonne. We're actually, uh, for the DFS, we'll be taking that to 3 point, uh, sorry, 4 million, uh, 4 million tonnes. We've been able to secure a mill. 200,000 ounces in the first year. We're looking to try and improve on that. Uh, we had around about uh, 170,000 ounces um, in the first six years. From the DFS, I think the key is that a large band of this is, um, is out of date and the DFS is um, due at the end of this quarter. It's very, very um, simple. Uh, mineralization here is, it's all free milling, uh, very high recoveries. Your energy, how much energy you put into it, it's, it's very undemanding. Good access, as I said, to infrastructure, uh, uh, 90 kilovolt, kilovolt um, grid connector there, environment, mining license approved. Metallurgy. Uh, these uh, absolute fantastic set of numbers, very high gravity. Gravity is the cheapest form of gold recovery. So our um, strategy is to uh, take advantage of that. Also at very coarse sizes, so very low energy inputs. This ore is very, very undemanding. CapEx and so forth, um, we're looking to try and improve that in, in the DFS. We've been able to uh, secure a mill. That saved us about $3.5 million uh, and taken it off the critical path. So we're tightening up all of those contingencies. Um, we're working on some of that pre-strip and we think that we'll be able to tighten that up. We've gone out for mining tender numbers. So that's all being flowing into the DFS. So uh, we'll see some, um, you know, I think some of those contingencies coming off. In a nutshell, look, um, pretty attractive all in sustaining cost. I think through the DFS, we'll be able to improve on that. As it says, we're um, being able to um, incorporate some lower costs for oxide trans and getting those uh, mining tender numbers will allow us to um, uh, work on that, um, on those mining costs. So uh, I think improvements to come. So uh, this again is the expanded project. We were looking at about um, just under 1.5 million ounces. With a lot of that drilling we've been able to throw into this, um, this D the DFS update we expand, expect to be able to substantially improve on these, um, on these numbers. Importantly, um, the, the execution, uh, we've been able to um, assemble a, a team that have um, got some fantastic runs on the board. Looking forward to uh, letting them loose and getting this built. Uh, execution, it's been fantastic in West Africa. You know, I think it has been a gold standard and uh, you know, we wanna have our name on the board as well. Development timeline, uh, it's pretty aggressive, um, looking, getting that DFL un underway and delivered. 
uh, and then we're targeting gold um, in Q4 2022. It's uh, it's doable. We need to do things like uh, formal investment decision and secure the funding. We're talking to a number of groups. I won't run through that. So I see my time's almost out. So um, look at emerging West African gold developer. Um, look, thanks very much for your time today.